Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Kini News. 13 years after the brutal murder of Mongolian national Altan Tuya Sharibu, there are still many unanswered questions. In an interview with Bloomberg today, Attorney General Tommy Thomas acknowledged this and said that he is looking into ordering a fresh investigation into the case. Attorney General Tommy Thomas may look into ordering a fresh investigation into the murder of Mongolian national Altan Tuya Sharibu. Thomas told Bloomberg that there are still many unanswered questions. He said it made no sense that the two former Police Special Action Force or UTK members Azila Hadri and Cyril Ashar Umar were solely culpable. Azila and Cyril were convicted and sentenced to death in 2015. The murder made headlines again after Malaysia Kini reported on the 16th of December that Azila is seeking a review of the federal court's decision to reinstate his conviction and death sentence. In his statutory declaration from death row in the Kajang prison, he accused former Premier Najib Abdul Razak of ordering the killing. He said that Najib had convinced him that Altan Tuya was a foreign spy who was a threat to national security. Najib had described Azila's SD as a complete fabrication and a political plot to silence him. Last Friday, Najib performed a Sumpa Laknat or Oath Before God at a mosque in Kuala Lumpur to deny that he ordered the killing or that he even knew the victim. Now, speaking of the Attorney General, former Inspector General of Police Hanif Omar has questioned if he would prosecute those who violated the 1989 Hatiai Peace Accord. He said this at an anti-communist rally in Kuala Lumpur today, which was attended by about 1,000 people. Former Inspector General of Police Hanif Omar has questioned whether Attorney General Tommy Thomas would be willing to prosecute those who violated the 1989 Hatiai Peace Accord. At a speech at an anti-communism rally in Kuala Lumpur today, Hanif cast doubt over Thomas claiming that he was, quote, a good friend of former Communist Party of Malaya CPM Secretary General Chin Peng. Jadi kerajaan mesti pegang kepada cara-cara ini. Kalau dia melanggar undang-undang, kawan-kawan kita dalam PD RAM sekarang ini mesti ambil tindakan. Tapi Adakah dia orang akan didakwa pasal pendakwaan ada dalam tangan Attorney General? And Attorney General, ialah Kau Mbak Chin Ping. Macam mana tu? Jadi sekarang kita mesti pandang kepada AG. Kita mesti pandang kepada dia. Shine the light on him. The CPM had signed a peace accord with the government of Malaysia in Hatiai, Thailand on the 2nd of December 1989, which saw the end of its 21 years of armed struggle. Earlier this month, a gathering of around 300 people in Kajang to commemorate the signing of the treaty had sparked controversy following the fear that there may be an attempt to revive communism. This led to the police investigation on the event. The Kuala Lumpur and Selangor Chinese Assembly Hall has called upon Education Minister Mazli Malik to conduct a dialogue with Chinese educationist groups on the teaching of Jawi script lessons in vernacular schools. The Kuala Lumpur and Selangor Chinese Assembly Hall or KLSCAH has called upon Education Minister Mazli Malik to conduct a dialogue with Chinese educationist groups on the teaching of Jawi script lessons in vernacular schools. KLSEAH Human Rights Committee head Liao Kok Fa said he believes such a dialogue will resolve the misunderstanding between different groups on Jawi lessons. He said Masli should be more proactive on the issue and take the first step to invite all concerned parties or stakeholders to meet. He added that the government needs to discuss and consider the calls of educationist group Dong Jiao Tong by allowing school boards of each Chinese primary school to decide on such lessons. According to Liao, a dialogue might not end the Jawi issue, but at least a portion of the misunderstanding can be resolved. Dong Jiao Zhong has said that they agree with PKR President Anwar Ibrahim's call for all parties to engage in dialogues over the teaching of Jawi script. However, the group appears firm on proceeding with their congress on the issue to be held on the 28th of December. Tong Jiao Zong has welcomed PKR President Anwar Ibrahim's call for all parties to engage in dialogues over the teaching of the Jawi script to standard for pupils in national and vernacular schools. However, the Chinese educationist group appeared firm on proceeding with its congress regarding the matter. In a statement this afternoon, they said, quote, We welcome the PKR President's statement. We also agree with his suggestion that all parties settle the dispute via dialogues. Our stand remains the same. We are willing to hold dialogues or communicate with any quarter in a rational manner before or after the December 28 Congress. 
Yesterday, Anwar urged Dong Jiao Zong and others, be it those who opposed or supported the teaching of Jawi script, to cancel their respective meetings. The PKR leader warned that the issue could further inflame the political and racial situation in the nation. Another congress, organized by the Gabungan Sani Kat Action Team or Sakat, which is also opposed to the teaching of Jawi script, is slated to take place on the 29th of December. Economic Affairs Minister Muhammad Azmin Ali has urged the Malaysians to reject bigotry, extremism and intolerance. In a Christmas message on Facebook today, Azmin said that the harmony in Malaysia today is a result of compassion, tolerance and understanding among different communities. He said that we cannot understate the contributions of Christians towards peace, harmony, prosperity and nation building and called on all Malaysians to join in on the Christmas festivities. Azmin added that the Malaysians should embrace the spirit of understanding, moderation moderation and mutual respect. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has assured Muslim citizens that the Citizenship Amendment Act or CAA will not change anything for them. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the new Citizenship Amendment Act or CAA is not anti-Muslim. He said this at a rally for his Hindu Nationalist Party or BJP in the capital. This came following days of violent, sometimes deadly protests across India. Against a new citizenship law, critics say discriminates against Muslims. Several thousand people took part in Modi's rally where he accused the opposition of distorting facts to trigger protests. The Muslims who were born on Indian soil or whose ancestors are children of Mother India, brothers and sisters, they have nothing to do with citizenship law or the National Register of Citizens. The Muslims are neither being sent to any detention centers nor do any detention centers exist. Brothers and sisters, this is a white lie. Modi's government says that the new law is required to help non-Muslim minorities from Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan who fled to India before 2015 by providing them with a pathway to Indian citizenship. But many Indians feel that it discriminates against Muslims and violates the country's secular constitution by making religion a test for citizenship. Alarmed by spreading protests and the rising violence, authorities have ordered a shutdown of internet and mobile messaging services in Delhi, shut metro stations and cancelled permissions for large demonstrations. Saudi Arabia on Monday sentenced five people to death and three to jail over the murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. However, a United Nations investigator accused it of making a, quote, mockery of justice by allowing the masterminds of the killing to go free. Saudi Arabia's public prosecutor announced on Monday that five people have been sentenced to death for the killing of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Three more people on trial were handed jail terms totaling 24 years for covering up the crime, while another three were found not guilty. Fourteen months ago, Khashoggi walked into the Saudi consulate in the Turkish capital of Istanbul. He was never seen again. He was reported to have been murdered with his body dismembered and removed from the building. Khashoggi was a United States resident and a staunch critic of Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the kingdom's de facto ruler. The U.S. Central Intelligence Agency believes that Prince Mohammed was the one who ordered the killing, an allegation which has been denied by Saudi officials. Till today, the whereabouts of Khashoggi's remains are still unknown. And before we wrap up, ladies and gentlemen, here's some news highlights from today. And that's all we have time for, ladies and gentlemen. For more, you can log on to kinetv.com. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Daily Motion for the latest news updates. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching, and Merry Christmas.